Hello and welcome to the next part of this tutorial series. Today we're going to be working on the UI and finishing it up. When we hit the play button, we open up a new screen where we have left and right buttons and a rotate button and a playing field. We're still going to be working on that, but let's dive into this part first. Before we can start, we have to integrate to our folder so that we have our Android, lib and so on folders right here. When we hit ls, we can clear that and then we have to type in flutter run. Do not forget to open up your Android device, your virtual device, or connect your phone before you type in Flutter and or you will get an error. So I'll see you once I'm ready. In the last tutorial, we just had a brief introduction to Flutter and how to set it up. Today, we're going to be making the UI work a little bit better. And let's start by doing that. So the first thing I want to do, instead of just putting Tetris up here, I want to put in a main menu. And let's also change the background color. So to do that, we just after the app bar, you hit enter and before the body or after the body, that does not matter. You can just select a background color and put it in colors dot brown. For example, you can choose any color you want. And if I hover over it, I should see the brown color right here. And you can put in square brackets like, let's say, like this and 300 and you get a different brown color. Now, if I restart the app, the background color changes. But let's now also start working at a new game menu. So let's just create a new class right here. So under the home class, let's make a class and let's call this the game screen. This is also going to extend or inherit from the stateless widget. And as always, you have to override the build function. So widget build build context is going to be the context. And if you override a function, you should just add a add override like this. So everyone knows that we're overriding a function. You don't really need to do that for the build function because everyone using Flutter should know that we have to override the build function for a stateless widget. But it's just a nice habit to do that. So let's copy and paste this up here just so like we have a nice code. And this is not going to change any functionality, just a nice thing to do right now. And for the game screen, we also want a scaffold, so return a scaffold. And in the scaffold, we want a app bar, which is just going to be the app bar again. And for the app bar, just put in a title and a text, let's say something like play. Let's put a semicolon after the return so we can format it, control shift I. Okay, for the end, for the app bar, we should also add a center title to true. So that it looks better like this, that's quite all right. And I say the comma right here. The next thing you want to do is add a background color. Let's add the same background color we have above. So colors.brown and then 300 in the, in the brackets like this. And for the body, we want to create a new class and let's call this the game class. This is just going to be the heart of our game. And we do get an error because it is not defined. So let's define it. Let's make a new file. Let's call this the game.dart. So what we want in here for now is just a class. Let's call this the game class and extends. And this is just going to extend the state full widget because we do need a state in our game. And if you hit tab, it should already import the flutter slash material dart. But if not, be sure to import that or you will get an error. And in here, since this is a stateful widget, we have to make a new stateful widget. And in here we want to call the create state function and pass in some kind of state class. So let's make a game class like this. So it's private again. So let's make a class and game. And this is going to extend from the state of the game class at the top and in here. To be able to implement this, we again have to implement the build function. So let's do that widget and build. Build context is just going to be the context like this. And in here, we also have to return something. So for now, let's just return a playing field. So this is going to be a container with some kind of width and height. So let's make a width of, let's say, 200 for now and a height of, let's say, 300 and also some kind of decoration. And this is just going to be a box. So box decoration. We just want to add a border. That's all. So we can actually see the container that we added. So let's make a border. In here, we want to decorate all borders. So border.all. And what do we want? Some kind of color. And let's just make a colors.black. So it's going to have a black border. And in here, a semicolon. And after hitting Control Shift I, you should be all good to go with the formatting. What we did is we just added a container, which is basically some kind of rectangle. We set up a width and height for the container, and then we decorated it so that we made the borders of the container visible with a black outline. Okay, that's all right with the game class, but in the main.dart we still have an error, and the error will be solved once we import the game.dart. And if I reload it right now, we cannot really access the game screen right here, this class. It's not going to load anytime soon, because we don't have any way to do that. So let's change the menu up a little bit. So double click on the menu, hit F12. So we open up our menu class. And in the menu class, we have two raised buttons. So let's first off delete one of them like that. 
we don't really want the erase button in here like this. We want to create a new file and let's call this the menu button dot dart and let's put the menu button in here. So let's again make a class menu button and this is going to extend from the stateless widget. And if I hit tab, it's going to automatically import the material dot dart like that. Awesome. And we have to overwrite the build function. And what do we want in here? So the menu button is going to call a function. And we actually can pass in here a function. So let's just put in a function as a property of a class. And let's call this the onClicked function. And let's also make a constructor so that we assign the onClicked function. So for the menu button, just call it a menu button like this. The same name as the classes for the constructor. And you can make a shortened version in Dart for the constructor. So just this dot onClicked function. So basically, once we call the menu button and pass in one parameter, it's going to automatically assign it to the onClicked function so that we can use it once we instantiate a new instance of this class. And as always in the build function, we want to return something. And what do we want to return? So go to the menu.dart and let's cut out the raised button right here. Just control X and paste it in the menu button after the return right here. And, and instead of a comma, let's put a semicolon at the end, control shift I. And now if I save this and in the menu.dart, I have to again import the menu button. Once you import the menu button.dart, in here you can actually just call the menu button. If we try to call it, we get an error. And this is because we have to pass in some kind of function by reference. So in the class, in the menu state right here, we have to make a new function. And let's make a just a void on play click. This does not take in any parameters like this. And in here we can just print and click play. Copy this function, just paste it in here by reference. So this, that means no parentheses, nothing at all, okay? Right now we are passing in the function by reference because if I add the parentheses, we would pass in the return value of this function, which is a void, which is nothing. So by doing this, it's just passing it by reference. And now let's go back to the menu button and try to call this function once we click on it. So in here, where we print pressed play, we want on the on press event, we want to call the on clicked function that we passed in. So just like this, and here we have to add parentheses. So it's a function call and not a function pass in by reference. Once I restart the game, I have one button right here. And if I click it, I get a clicked play print out, which is just the click play of this function in the menu.dart, even though we press the menu button right here, which is quite awesome. And let's try to work with it. First off, I would probably resize the button a little bit. So instead of returning a raised button, let's return some kind of button theme. Let's set some kind of height at 60 and also a minimum width at something like 200 and add a semicolon at the end, format it. And let's now cut out the raised button without the semicolon and put in a child parameter, child, and paste in the raise button and add a comma after it and delete the semicolon. You should have something like this. And if you hit Control Shift I, you should be able to format it. And now if I restart it, the button should look a little bit bigger. That's quite all right. That looks quite good. Okay, that's going to be it for the button. So we can close the menu button.dart. We are not going to need this anymore. And now let's work with the on play clicked function. And let's now figure out how to load a completely new screen once we press the play button. So we want to call the navigator, which is something like in Unity when you load a new scene. So navigator.push. And we want to push the context, just a parameter that we have to put in. And then a material page root like this. And in here it wants a builder, which is just going to be an anonymous function, which takes in a context and returns us the game screen like this. And we want to call it, let's put a comma right here and a semicolon at the end. So if I hit control shift, I should format like this. Now, if I reload it and hit the play button, I should get a new scene with the play menu and then our container right here. This does not look good right now, but it's going to look better in a while. And if I hit the back button right here on the top left, which is an automatic thing from Dart, we are going to get back to the main menu. And like this, we can just transition from screen to screen, which is quite awesome. And let's now work on the main menu a little bit more so we can add some kind of Tetris text and some kind of text styling in here. So in the main menu, in the column layout, we just have one menu button and let's add something above the menu button. So let's add a text like that. And it's going to take in a Tetris text like this. And let's, and let's try and look what it does. If I reload this, it just puts in a little Tetris text, which doesn't look good at all. So let's just style it. So we can put in a style parameter and this is going to take in a text style widget and the text style widget has lots and lots of parameters. So let's start by putting some kind of font size in here. 
let's say something like 70 and let's also put in a font weight which is just something like bold and so on so font weight dot bold next up we want a color so let's just stick with colors dot blue so we have it themed nicely and if i restart it i have a little text like this which does not look really good so let's try to add a little shadow to our tetris text to shadow and this takes in an array of shadows so just make a one shadow like this and in here we want to pass in a color which is just going to be the colors.black for now and also a blur radius. Let's try something 8.0 and then as the last parameter let's add an offset and this is just going to be the x and y parameters in which we want to offset it. So it takes in an offset widget like this and let's try something 2.0 and 2.0 and a comma right here and try to format it. And if I save it and hit the reload button, I have a little outline for the Tetris and it pops out better. This is going to be it for the menu right now. You can style it any way you want to, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And let's hop over to the main.dart and let's try and define some kind of variables. So let's make a constant double and let's call this the width and set it equal to something like 300. And let's also make a constant double height and make that, set that equal to 400 as well. We are going to dynamically figure out these values later on in the tutorial series, but this will do it for now so that we have a static size of the playing field. Now if I hop over to the game.dart, we can close up the menu, we don't need that anymore. I, instead of just putting in width and height like this, I want to import the main.dart and let's use the width as width and the height as height. And we also want to center the playing field, so just put in a center widget and this takes in a child and let's just paste in the container in here and like this without the semicolon and paste it in here after the comma hit Control shift i to format it reload it and hit the play button and now we should have a centered playing field that's quite good let's now add some buttons at the bottom right here and to do that we have to add the whole playing field into a column layout and we want the main axis alignment to be the main axis alignment dot space evenly and the children just are just going to be an array of widgets and let's cut the center out without the semicolon and paste it in the children and then put a comma at the end like that and then you can format it nicely and this is just going to be the first widget it should not have changed anything right now and the buttons are going to be in a row so in the column layout let's split it into two columns so the center right here the playing screen is going to be the top widget of the column and then the bottom widget are going to be the buttons so just add a row so we can have buttons next to each other and we want a main axis alignment of the main axis alignment space evenly again and for the children it's just going to be an array of widgets just like we had with the column layout and in here we want to create some kind of action button so let's make a new file and call this the action button dot dart and open it up and let's create a class a action button which extends from the stateless widget this is going to have a on click event so a function and this is just going to be the on clicked function and let's also pass in a bike icon so button icon create a constructor so action button and this dot on clicked and the second parameter is going to be the button icon and we also have to overwrite the build function so widget build and build context and in here we just want to return a button theme the child of the button theme is going to be a padding widget which takes in a padding parameter and let's make a edge insert and let's select all and let's put in something like 20 for now it's going to be quite right so that the buttons are not next to each other and let's now actually create the button so a child is going to be the raised button in the raised button we want a on pressed event and let's add an anonymous function like this and just call the on clicked function and we also want a color let's select some, something like colors.blue so we stick with the blue theme of tetris and then the child is going to be the button icon. Do not forget the semicolon at the end of the button theme right here and a couple of commas right there so it formats nicely. Let's go back to the game.dart and import the action button so that we can use it in action button.dart. Let's go down back to the row that we created earlier and let's create a action button and we need a function to pass in. So under the underscore game class right here let's create a new function. Let's call this the on action button pressed. This is going to be a void function and let's not do anything for now and just pass in this function by reference and we also have to pass in an icon and we are going to have exactly three buttons and the row is going to start from the left to the right so let's put a move left button on the left and a move right button in the middle and the rotate button to the far right let's make a new icon widget and pass in icons dot 
and this is just going to be the left arrow, so left arrow left, like this. Copy the action button, add a comma right here and paste it in two more times. And add commas right here too, so we can format it nicely. And so the first button is the arrow left, the next button is going to be the arrow right, and the last button is going to be some kind of rotate. So you can select the rotate left, right, doesn't really matter, I'm going to select the rotate 90 degrees. And if I reload it, I have three buttons at the bottom right here next to each other, right, pop up. They will not do anything right now, so let's try and put some functionality into it. In every single frame that we are going to have, you have to keep track if the user pressed any kind of button. So, to do that, let's make some kind of enum, and last button pressed, and this is just going to be an enum which tells us which button the user has pressed. So let's make something like left, right, rotate, and none. Now we are going to take advantage of the stateful widget class right here in the game. So down here in the underscore game class, if you want a new property, you can use either var uh, or you can use the last button pressed. I'm going to use the last button pressed as the identifier of the type and let's call this the perform action and let's set this to last button pressed and none. And this variable is going to change its state. So in the on action button pressed, we want to pass in some kind of last button pressed. Let's call this the new action. And in this function, we have to call the set state function, which is a Dart function, which will change the state of the stateful widget right here. So to change this property and save it, we have to change it in this set state function. So the perform action is going to be equal to the new action that we pass in. But now we would get an error because we're trying to call this function without any parameter in the action button. So let's go back to the action button and add a parameter in here. Yeah, but to do that, we have to be importing the game.dart so that we can use the enum. So let's make a variable that's called last button pressed and call this the next action like that. And this is just going to save if this is a left, a right or a rotate button. So in here, just add a parameter to the constructor, this.nextAction. And when we call the on click function, which is this function right here, the on action button pressed. We want to pass in the action of this button, which is going to be left, right, or rotate, depending on the button. And now let's go back to the game.dart. And now we have to actually pass another parameter in here. So after the comma for the first button, we want the last button pressed dot left to be called. For the right button, we want the last button pressed dot right to be called and comma and for the last button we want the last button press dot rotate to be called like this and let's also make some kind of debug print so let's add a debug print so if we change the perform action variable right here in the on action button pressed and in the set state function call we just want to print out changing state let's add the new state so perform action dot to string so that we can print it out and now if i restart the app I have the buttons and if I hit the left button, changing state to left button pressed and here the right button pressed and the rotate button. Awesome, now we have a working UI that actually does something and keeps track of the player state. So left, right and rotate. This is it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it. And in the next tutorial, we are going to start creating our back end of the game. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.